Oh, 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 maybe. Open. There we go. What's up and good morning, guys. Welcome back to another video. Well, we're sitting here in the gym parking lot. See? Gym. And, well, I hate to admit this, but I'm all about being real on the channel. And there's been something going on in my head that has, like, started to make me, I don't want to say lazy. Lazy is not really the right word for it. But I'm starting to make excuses to avoid things. And the gym is one of those. And I hate it. I hate it. I feel like I was getting back on track, but for whatever reason, like, I'm just making these excuses to where, like, yeah, maybe, you know, okay, we'll go to the gym tomorrow, or, well, Dave can't go today, so maybe I shouldn't go today, and that's horrible. That's a horrible way of thinking. Now, that being said, the excuse that I'm about to use right now, even though I've been sitting in the gym parking lot for, like, 10 minutes, posting some stuff on the Work For It Instagram page and doing that kind of thing, and it's really, like, me trying to talk myself up to going in, even though, you know, typically, the old bang there helps, but... It even seems like lately the bang hasn't even been working. This stuff used to like make me so cracked out I had to go work out because uh, I had to burn up that energy and I didn't know what to do with it But I think I've just become immune to that too But regardless me avoiding the gym right now is gonna benefit you guys because well we get a video out of it. Well so long Jim I'm a horrible influence on you guys. I'm sorry. Don't do what I'm doing. Don't avoid the gym But I set up this video shoot kind of close to the gym that way I can come back And get my workout in today Oh Keep forgetting about this door issue we're having here. Hold on. Come on. Come on. We got it. We got it. We got it. There we go. Hopefully I've got some parts coming soon to alleviate that issue. So I normally come film over here because usually this parking lot is empty. Aside from like a couple of tweakers that I always end up scaring off because apparently this is a cool place to do your drugs. Or nowadays it's a cool place to come tag up some crappy tagging with people that uh don't really know how to spell I mean, I mean I guess you can kind of read that now I gotta say one of the biggest things that pisses me off is this kind of crap I can't stand people that go tag and deface property like that it is absolutely absolutely if any of you guys are taggers out there I mean you're probably gonna get offended but it is one of the most cowardly crimes you could do you're gonna sneak in in the middle of the night when there's no chance of you getting caught nobody's gonna see you you're gonna spray paint something with your buddies and then you're all gonna giggle and run away and uh, then somebody's got to come clean up your crap, spend money to fix this. And maybe it's the contractor in me that knows how much it costs, especially if you have like a nice block wall. I mean, this is a pretty basic block wall, but if you have a nice block wall or like the side of the freeway, they just spend a ton of money doing like some beautiful poured in place concrete and then some idiots come and tag it. And then for whatever reason, nobody can get a paint color that's ever close to whatever color the concrete is. So they always end up painting these ugly squares in like 1400 different shades of gray or brown and it never ends up matching. And then you get freeways that look like crap and end rant. Hey, it looks like our special guest has arrived. Oh, what's up, Wes? What's up? Wes, we got issues with your truck, buddy? Uh, yeah. GM uh, quality, you know, at its finest. Uh-oh. Um, Uh-oh, are you turning? No, I'm not turning. I, it's just little shit that they never want to, uh, you know, fix when they, they know it's an issue. So, for instance, my uh, backup camera on the truck stopped working, and you call them, and I have an extended warranty, and they tell you, oh, well, software updates aren't included in the warranty, so you have to pay them. A diagnostics fee of you know like whatever 160 and then whatever the update is you know with 100 or 200 dollars just to so your camera will work so it's like that's crazy what's the point of that's your extended no, warranty it shouldn't have anything to do with a camera working the module for these controls like like my something that i noticed wasn't working either but i never use it because my otter box doesn't work is the wireless charger on the console that apparently is tied into the module and it needs an update as well to work you buy an extended warranty and they, they call it a software update so it's not covered. So this is stupid shit. That's crazy. That's why I avoid all my warranties just right off the bat. Because at that point, well, I mean, they, they really don't cover much. At least if you're gonna do anything cool to your vehicle, they're not gonna cover much unless you have a real good service guy. Then well, things weirdly start to cover it. The dealership is, is good because when I did the headers and the E85 Dino Tune, and I brought the truck to them like a month later because I was having issues with the injectors and they replaced them under warranty after all those mods. So like. I guess they pick and choose or that maybe they they already hooked me up enough to where they feel like now they want they me to gotta get some, some money, money back i don't know but uh i'm taking it in thursday you know i'm not saying we've got the biggest audience in the world but if they're not going to cover a, a backup camera that's not working and claim you got to pay for a software update for it yeah just call me bro I'll, I'll come storming in there with a the camera my news crew my reporting crew or just me holding the camera talking to myself and they're going to kick me out i don't know but we'll do something all right put, put it in reverse i'll turn the music off service rear vision system that's crazy yeah yeah i've never seen that and I'm then this little charger 
Yeah, well those don't work on my phone anyway. So if you guys didn't know, the 2016 and older uh, GM trucks that have the little wireless charging thing set up right there, it doesn't work on iPhones. You gotta get the 2017 and up that works on iPhones because God forbid they use the same uh, technology that's across the board. GM used some like outdated version or whatever, or maybe iPhone, I don't know. Blame whoever you wanna blame, but it doesn't work. I do know a guy though that can adapt the new console lid to the older trucks and make it work flawlessly. And I've thought about doing that, but as you can see, uh, with my phone case, it, it doesn't fit. And I don't even have that big of a phone case. I have like the slimline otter box. So Wes, talk to us, buddy. We've got, we got a new modification to the truck. What did we do? Um, well, I've been jealous of, um, Carlos is trained right. for a I long time. I forget his name too. No, nah, I don't forget. I just, I got to think of what I'm going to say. I, I'm, I'm sure everybody in the group's been jealous that only Carlos has a train horn. So it's true. That's I've been, true. I've been keeping my eyes out for one and I actually reached out to a uh, horn blasters, which is the brand that he has. And they were willing to work with me and uh, give me like a sponsorship or whatever. Well, like I, in that meantime of, you know, communicating back and forth, I found one that popped up locally on a uh, offer up. Wes is the king of offer up, all right? I'm telling you, like we could be anywhere. The last truck show we went to, he's like, all right, after the show, I gotta go, I gotta go sell these parts. Uh, anytime we're at the warehouse, hey, I gotta go meet a guy down the street, I'm trying to sell some parts, I gotta buy some parts. This guy wheels and deals so much, and you may or may not have noticed, uh, a couple videos ago, Wes was putting some steps on his truck. Wes, those are gone, buddy, what happened to those? Those lasted about a day. Yeah, so unfortunately, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose when you buy used stuff or or whatever um i don't think so you really lost in that in case. that case i actually after my time and gas i probably broke even but i bought some steps amp they were amp style steps another brand they just they had they just had a little too much playing them as anything they kind of wear out and then instead of servicing those i sold them real quick to a guy on offer up for 100 bucks more than you spent. 100 bucks more than i spent but if you factor in my time and gas it came out to about breaking even which is, you know, I'm happy with that. And, and then now I will be ordering the uh, the actual amp steps. In the case of the air horn or the train horn, this guy fell on hard times. He had a badass Dodge dually truck with a toy hauler and he, s he bought a bunch of stuff for it and never got to install it. Ended up selling the truck or whatever. I picked up an $800 train horn for 350 bucks. Brand new in the box, never been used. There you go. And I ended up throwing it on the truck and didn't have to go through the whole deal of uh you know getting a sponsorship everybody thinks like sponsorships like that's the goal everybody wants a sponsorship they're a lot of work um i don't know the exact details of horn blasters or any of these other companies but a lot of companies out there uh, if they're going to sponsor you they have like a big list of things they want you to do there was a lot of sponsorships i turned down for SEMA because it was just like i'm not gonna give that much of my time for a 200 dollars part i'd rather buy the part some companies wanted like i had to send uh, three high resolution pictures a month for a year and basically you got to go out and they want different pictures in different locations Plus you got to be available for shows and all that stuff for like a $200 part It's just ends up not being worth it sometimes, but show us what we got Wes. Well before we go. It's the uh, Klein HK7 it comes with a uh, three gallon tank um, 150 PSI 100% duty cycle compressor um, a three trumpet style horn setup that you can mount all together which I did or you can separate them to make it easier to mount it also comes with a onboard air setup with like a like a little air hose and chuck to air up tires nice came with everything the instructions were a little little uh, hard to follow were they in English they were in English all right, but that's good. I had to go to their website for uh, a little more insight on a couple of the, the steps in there but uh other than that, I think the quality is up there with the other couple major brands. So far, I can't speak on it more than a couple days, but. Well, I can see we've got the uh, the air tank mounted here. So it comes with a, uh, a little nylon bag, coil hose, never used it yet. Oh we got is this all? Um, yeah, that's the brand, Klein. <coughs> Those the same guys that make Lyman's pliers? No, that's <laughs> Klein with one in. So anyway, it comes with a 35 foot coil hose so you can get around your, all four tires of your vehicle or if you had a trailer or something so I'm not Preston's I'm not a, a custom shop that did this I did this with some all thread from Home Depot to mount the compressor or the uh, the tank and I just bolted the uh, compressor to the frame rail so it, it's all right dude listen like it's, you, it works Wes is nervous everybody's gonna critique his work no, it's all I, right I, buddy hey. I cleaned up 
the wiring. I can already I tell could, you, but... you're gonna get more credit than I do, because you did it yourself. All right, Wes, any other warnings before we go up underneath there? I don't know, it's a mall crawler, so there, there might be a little sand under there from the beach. Oh, all right. Let's see what we, oh, jeez. Oh, hold on, I'm getting under here, getting under here. Oh, the asphalt's hot. So clearly you've uh, removed your spare tire. Yeah. Did you already do that? You already spare did that. Spare tire, yeah, it's been off. All right, spare tire has been off. Weight, weight reduction. There you go, gotcha. So I made some U-bolts out of uh, all thread to hold the tank up there. That's plenty sturdy. The compressor is over there on the frame rail mounted sideways, which is allowable. So we've got the compressor mounted over here. Is it rubber mounted? Yeah, it has some rubber grommets that it sits on. All right, nice, nice. And this is this is Klein's compressor, right? Everything here is it's at least in, labeled Klein. Yeah, it's labeled Klein. It said made in China on it. It's an oilless unit. Um, comes with the air breather hose that you can mount up further away from a like any water that could potentially get in there. Come with the braided hose to the tank with the relief valve. It has a pet cock for draining any moisture out, which they recommend you do pretty often. Here is your pressure switch. I think it's it opens at 120 PSI. Gotcha, what are and the, then, uh, do you know what the horns are rated for? 175, the, the compressor is only up to 150, so they give you a, a little bit of a buffer there. Then you've got your uh, yeah, PSI so this, gauge well, over so there. So this didn't come with it, I actually added the gauge just so I had a idea of what was going on and also to see if it was holding pressure. I found a couple fittings that were leaking that I had to re uh, redo with some- Teflon. Uh, yeah, a little more Teflon tape, but I still have a leak somewhere because it's, it's not holding. The horns are mounted up forward, a little forward of the bed. You say it's a triple trumpet. Yeah, right? triple trumpet. Are those metal or are those plastic? Those are those are ABS and then like reinforced with some sort of metal in there to make them a little stiffer. It's a good look at Wes's exhaust also because I don't think we've ever actually been up underneath the truck. There's his Borla muffler. Yeah. And the horns are tucked up just above it there. They're actually pretty good size. Yeah, they're, they're big. They're big. They were kind of hard to, to mount. I could have split them up, but I didn't want to run like a hose from each horn, inlet and outlet, because they're in, they're in a series would have been more of a pain. I just does it have crash. actual manifold on it, or are they? Uh, there's one solenoid valve that goes. It starts at the biggest one. They sell two more solenoid valves as an upgrade. That way you get the full pressure of the tank to each horn individually. I feel like you're just asking for more to go wrong. Though. Yeah, well, it just it costs more, and then it's more to hook up. But um, it, they say you gain a couple decibels in output. They rate these at 100 and I think 153 decibels. That's pretty loud. At, at 150 PSI. Well, I think you did a uh, pretty good job of cramming them up in there. That looks like a, a I, fun task. Yeah, if you look closely, I actually, it was a little bit of a pain in the butt. Um, I actually broke one of the horns. If you look, I had to buy some uh, epoxy and epoxy them, and I ended up reinforcing the other two. Oh, some Mighty Putty. No, I used Flex -seal. a JB Weld plastic, uh, plastic epoxy that bonds well to metal because the threaded part is actually metal. The, the horn itself was plastic and it got, I didn't break it completely off, but as I was trying to like put it in place, I should have, I should have taken the horns off, but I, I didn't because I was trying to make sure they fit and I ended up bending one too much and it cracked it. So That's the I, one thing I always worry about with the plastic horns. Um, I mean, these seem like a lot higher quality than the type you're going to see at Pet Boy, uh, but I've like held the horns that you get from like Pet Boys or like the cheap auto parts ones. And it's just literally like cheap, brittle plastic just waiting to break. So hopefully, uh, these hold up a lot better. I mean, clearly they've already once broken, but seems like they're built a lot better than you see on that style. They are. And before anybody comments on the, the clamps on the exhaust, I actually recently changed to this muffler and I'm still trying to figure out if this is the one I'm going to stick to before I go and get it welded in place. Um, and I actually have a warranty issue with this muffler uh -oh. where it's got one of the factory welds up here. If you, it, well, you probably can't see it, it's on the top. It, it was, uh, it's leaking right there. So it, the, one of the factory welds didn't get a good uh, seal. I don't know guys, it seems like Wes is always having warranty issues with stuff. And that's a he high just, quality, I mean, that's a $200 uh, muffler. Borla's like, good, yeah. I, mean, yeah I was disappointed in that and I reached out to them and they asked me like, do you have your original receipt and all that? And of course I ordered it online. So it's like, do I, fighting with the online retailer, they said uh, after 30 days they can't warranty it, but it's like, I didn't put it on for like 30 days. It wasn't even on the truck. That's the one thing I hate about buying stuff online and like dealing with all that crap. I don't have the patience to deal with stuff like that. I like companies 
that if something breaks, you shoot them an email, they say, oh man, that sucks. At most, they're like, send us a picture, whatever it may be, and then they send you out something new. I mean, simple <laughs> little push button switch. Right there, there you can see the switch. A lot of times, uh, especially with horns, they send you like a weird, really crappy, what do they call it, a momentary switch. Yeah. Um, that one's actually pretty decent looking. I, I don't mind that one. A lot of people tie them into like your actual factory horn switch. So basically you hit the horn on the uh, steering wheel and that ends up being your train horn. I don't particularly like that because there's gonna be an instance where you want your actual horn um, and you don't want to use the train horn or let's say, you know, you get pulled over and you're like, I don't know what you're talking about, officer, look. My horn is just the normal factory horn. Just don't look for another switch. And some people, I think you said Eddie, I don't even know. Eddie did it on his to where he could switch it over to where sometimes the, the steering wheel is the train horn or it could go back to the factory horn. Yeah. So, I mean, if you want to do the extra wiring, that's one way to do it. I like always having mine on a separate switch. It's just, I don't know, to me, it just makes more sense. One thing you talked about, well, what we discussed the other day were fuse taps. Yeah, so you need a, uh, a switch source of 12 volt. There's a constant that goes to the relay and then you need a a 12 volt ignition source so what i found easiest is to uh basically find a fuse in the uh the panel and use a fuse tap out here we have pep boys and in autozone nobody sold a micro fuse tap which is what gm uses on a lot of these newer vehicles and i'm sure other manufacturers do as well but what i did is i i took a multimeter and found with the key off a uh, a fuse that did not have a uh any power going to it and then with a once i turned the key on i found that it was switched to the ignition tapped into it there and that was my uh basically remote wire to the relay so one thing you want to remember um especially when you're doing any type of compressor whether it's for a train horn or you just want air tanks on your vehicle is make sure it's always tied into the ignition um Typically, like Wes said, he's, he's currently got a leak right now that he's still trying to track down. Leaks develop, whether it was on the install or over time, and you don't want, if you're gonna park your truck for a couple days, that compressor just have to keep kicking on, keep kicking on, keep kicking on, because there's a pressure drop, and so it wants to keep filling the tank. So you wanna make sure the second you turn your key off, all sources of power to that compressor are dead. That way that doesn't happen. I've, I've dealt with that in the past. I'm actually dealing with that currently on my truck. When the key's off, my compressors should be off, but for some reason, they're not turning off. Uh, well, they will, but then the pressure switch will like just fully stay open and it, it's just chaos. Um, so we're really trying to track down that issue. The problem is pressure switches are cheap and I don't know anybody that makes a really high end pressure switch. And that's really hard to say that many times fast. Yeah. But if anybody out there, out there knows of a good pressure switch, let me know because I need to replace mine because I'm dealing with that issue and I'm worried I'm going to burn up my compressors or worse. Well, here, bleed some air out because I want to hear how loud your compressor is too. All right, so there's Wes's compressor fired up. Sounds about, I would say, well, I'd equate that to, I'd say it's a, it's a little bit louder than a Vier. I'd almost say it's kind of like those, uh, like portable compressors that they make that you carry in your vehicle. Um, I'd say it's about that loud. I know audio is kind of hard to pick up on just how loud something is uh, on camera, but I'd say it's about as loud as like a little portable air compressor. Now, Wes is running one three gallon tank. On my Silverado, when I had my train horn set up, I ran one eight and a half gallon tank. And even that tank, I mean, if you got on that horn for a minute, you would drain the horn uh, pretty quick. I was running five trumpets with half inch airlines and it's, uh, these things eat up a lot of air, believe it or not. What, do you know what size airlines you're running? Yeah, so mine uses uh, quarter inch airlines and I get about close to 10 seconds of uh, constant horn blast, I guess you would say. Um, they do That upgrade that we talked about with the extra solenoid valves upgrade you to half inch lines. So they said you probably lose close to half your your uh your horn time gotcha. by going to the bigger line just because it, you're you're able to move that air much faster so like anything it's a trade-off you'll get a louder horn it'll probably have a different little different pitch to it being that you're running half inch airlines to it um to me if you've got the air capacity i like half inch airlines because you know i just want the biggest loudest most obnoxious thing that you can do and uh the reason i don't have a horn on my truck yet on my current gmc i have the compressors i have the air tanks i have everything in place but I'm trying to find a low profile mount um, or a low pro manifold for a Nathan K5LA. The company that I order my stuff from only has the high profile mounts, which basically has three horns on the bottom, the manifold that goes to all of them and the two horns on top. So essentially it ends up being like a 16 inch tall thing, which doesn't really work well to tuck up underneath my truck. I don't want to see him hanging down. So I'm on the hunt right now for a low pro Nathan K5LA. If anybody out there has one, let me know because I need one. But all right, Wes. Let's hear it, buddy. Let's hear what you got. I 
I don't think the neighborhood dogs over there like it. <laughs> Probably not. I don't think anybody likes it. It's definitely pretty loud. 350 bucks from offer up. One of my biggest things, and you guys know I'm a, I'm a stickler for details, and calling a train horn a train horn. Air, right, I, I said air horn. Yeah, my, no, my no, I, no, it is an air horn. You're right. Oh, really? To me, unless it like actual locomotive companies use it, it's not a train horn. So that's why I like the Nathan K5LA. Like that is an actual horn that Amtrak uses. Like that's an actual train horn. The guy I buy them from buys them from train companies, refurbishes them, uh, puts new baffles in them, powder coats them, and then sends them out. Uh, so to me, that's a real train horn. These are air horns, which it, it, it's a correct statement. I'm glad you said that. Well, I, if you go to their websites, everybody has a weird definition for it. But I think from what I've seen is the frequency that they tune them to or whatever standard the, the train companies use is where they can call them a train horn. But obviously they don't have that distinguished sound of a train. But for what you paid for it, I think you got a pretty good deal, dude. Oh, yeah, I think so too. And I've, I've priced out cheaper kits. And I, like I said, I was looking at the uh, horn blasters and I'd say their kit would to be as loud as that with the same you know amount of equipment was gonna cost me over 500 bucks probably even with their, the discount that they were willing to give me and I'm not I wasn't against spending it I was I was down to do it I just this fell into my my hands really and I was like why not you know there you go and one thing you do want to be careful about though um, I know Klein's like a, a pretty known brand but be careful about going with the super super cheap eBay special compressors um, tanks I mean maybe you get lucky maybe you don't but you don't want to risk uh, a compressor overheating causing an issue they could start a fire uh, compressors are one of those things that are kind of kind of tricky and you can burn them up pretty easily I had issues with uh, my Vi air compressors we actually ran what we thought was significantly thick enough cable to the compressors but we ended up actually burning up one of the cables because they just draw so much power and so there's so much heat going through them so you got to be careful with a lot of that type of stuff Wes did you use the right cables so the kit came with which I what I believe is a 10 gauge wiring and I think if you look at an ampacity chart that for that length of wire the draw was fine. So I know nothing about Klein. I'm not even going to try and speak on any of this because I, I haven't looked into any of their stuff but uh, I know like my last truck all of my compressors uh, my tanks all that stuff I ordered it through real, real train horns but it was all drop shipped from horn blasters. So, my Vire, my, uh, my tanks, my switches, my solenoids, all that stuff came from horn blasters. So I can attest to the quality of that stuff. And, you know, everything there seemed to work out well. Everything was great. Uh, but we'll see. We'll keep you guys kind of updated on Wes's setup, see exactly how the, the client's been holding up. You've been having fun with it. I've been here. Yes, uh, scared a few people. Well, I'm jealous, dude. Now I'm, I'm going back on that hunt. I need, get, I need to get a train horn on my old, uh, my old Denali over there. I miss it. It's one of the things I miss the most. Honestly, after my accident with my Silverado, I, I should have unbolted it and taken it with me. The problem was, um, if you guys don't know that whole story, go back, there's videos on it. Uh, but the truck being in police impound, like I didn't really have a chance. It's not like it was just sitting in some wrecking yard where like nobody's watching me. Anytime I went in there to go grab stuff out of it, like I had like a group of people just kind of standing there. And uh, I don't think anybody wanted to sit there and watch me like unbolt crap off my truck. But with that, guys, we're going to wrap up this video. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have not subscribed already, please click the subscribe button now. I'll put a link down to Wes's whole setup here in the description. That way uh, you guys can check it out if you're interested in something similar. Don't forget to give this video a like, aka a thumbs up. Don't forget to check out WorkForItApparel.com because if there's anything you want in this life, you got to be willing to work for it. You guys are the best. Roll the outro. Damn. Uh. Yeah.